Hello, we were talking about bone biology last week and I wanted to add a few terms. There's a bit of banging going on which I can't get away from so this is going to be a short one so that works but when we look at a long bone there are some features here this bit, the flaring, the bits at either end, some common features in long bones that we have names for. Now when we're talking about a long bone, a long bone is longer than it is wide, which when we look at something like the humerus, you think, well, that's obvious. But that means that these bones, the metacarpals and the phalanges, they're also long bones, even though they're short, because they are much longer than they are wide. And we can say, see the same features that I'm gonna talk about uh, on those as well. So this is a brief bone terminology video. And I get to talk about my PhD a little bit again. Um, right, humerus. What else have we got? Uh, oops. Got a femur. Got a tibia. Oh, got a humerus. So they're all long bones. Uh, I could pick any of these as an example. This is the tibia from below the knee. Uh, and we've talked about how a bone has a compact, like a hard outer shell, the cortical bone or the compact bone. And inside it has spongy bone because it looks like a sponge, trabeculae, cancellous bone. But look at the shape of this bone. It has a shaft and it has ends. I will try not to refer to them as heads because the head of a bone varies depending upon which bone we're talking about. But it's this shape, this format that I'm talking about. Now the shaft of the bone is called the diaphysis. So most of the bone is the diaphysis. And then we can see the bone flares at either end, right, to a wider portion. The wider portion at either end is the, the epiphysis. And then the flared part joining the diaphysis with the epiphysis is the metaphysis. And those are the parts of the bone. Those are the words I really wanted to mention. Um, now what we find is, so when the bone is forming, these long bones form through endochondral ossification. That is, there is a cartilage precursor that is then replaced with bone as progenitor cells that can become bone move in with the blood. And we see that that ossification occurs first in the diaphysis and then the secondary centers of ossification are in the epiphyses at both ends. And this leaves um, a strip of cartilage in between the epiphysis and, well, the diaphysis. It's in the met metaphysis. Um, it gets called the epiphyseal growth plate. So this bit of cartilage in between the bone and the bone um, is what allows the long bone to keep growing. And that's what my PhD was about. Um, there are chondrocytes in there, the cells of the, of the cartilage, uh, doing some quite special things, organizing quite special ways. They form these lovely columns of cells and they're producing new bone at one end as uh, continually producing new chondrocytes to make new cartilage. So if you look at an x-ray of a long bone in somebody who still has an epiphyseal growth plate, the bone, the mineralized bone will be, will not be radio translucent. It will be radio opaque. That is, it will appear white because the x-rays won't be able to pass through it very easily. But the growth plate, because it's made of cartilage, which is not mineralized, the x-rays will be able to pass through that easily. So when looking at a long bone in between the epiphysis and the diaphysis, you will see a growth plate in an x-ray of a young person. And that's not a fracture. That's a normal thing. It can be associated with fractures because it's a bit of a weak spot. That's a whole other issue. But when you're looking at x-rays, you, you look out for that. Now, the growth plates ossify, that is the cartilage becomes bone, um, at the end of adolescence. It's related to oestrogen production. So uh, girls growth plates ossify earlier in life than boys because they produce more oestrogen earlier. 
so you know maybe 15 16 17 18 years old or something whereas boys their growth plates will ossify a little bit later maybe when they're 18 19 20 21 22 sometimes even later but usually around that age which is one of the reasons boys grow to be bigger than girls is because they have longer um, to grow in okay at the epiphysis that's where we tend to find the condyles so the surfaces of the bone are covered in articular cartilage and make a, a movable joint with another bone so these are the condyles which means that flared bits nearby um, are epicondyles the humerus is quite a good example of this um, so look again diaphysis flared metaphysis epiphyses at either end and clear condyles the knuckles of the bone um, and with the uh, the humerus look we've got these epicondyles these sticky outy bits that you can palpate on yourself so the condyles are the articulating surfaces the epicondyles are the sticky outy bony bits upon the condyles nearby um, the humerus is a good example because the ulnar nerve runs posteriorly to the medial epicondyles when you bang it that's your funny bone um, we can see the same thing with a femur condyles epicondyles and in fact while the femur looks like maybe it's a bit different to the diaphysis metaphysis epiphysis construct we were talking about earlier um, that's a clear epiphysis here this is as well um, this was an epiphysis and it's been pulled in slightly different directions as muscles and tendons have attached to it and what have you um, but it's the same it's the same format in that bone um, if we um, if we look at the phalanges we see the same sh sort of shapes right diaphysis flared metaphysis epiphysis condyles on either end the long bone is articulating at its proximal and distal ends so this format um, works throughout throughout most of the body that's it just a few more words to add to your vocabulary so you can hold a conversation with um, an orthopedic surgeon or a bone biologist uh, comfortably all right and we were talking about long bones one day we'll classify bones and we'll talk about the different types of bone and stuff but uh, that's for another day